Inside episode 22 on Outsourcing Live, I interview one of my students from Mass Outsource Mastermind as a case study of how he's used outsourcing to work with local businesses. Within a few months, he was able to bring on 57 clients with his business partner and he's doing exceptionally well. At the end of the podcast, I have a new tool that I've just started using to send voicemails and voice tasks to my virtual assistant. Let's play it. Welcome to the Outsourcing Live Podcast, where you will learn to build a virtual team to run your business. And now, your host, Tyrone Shum. Hey everyone, it's Tyrone Shum from Outsourcing Live. Today's got a, I've got an exciting interview today because I've got a real life case study here from a student who completed through the Mass Outsource Mastermind course, which I did. I run. I've been running consistently over the last couple of years or so, and um, he's been really, really active in internet marketing and also his real estate business as well. And I wanted to get him onto the call because he's got some real gems to share with you on how he's done with his outsourcing team and what he's implemented over the last couple of years since I've known him anyway. So let me introduce you to this special guest of mine. His name's Rob Bailey. So welcome to the call, Rob. Hey, thanks, Tyrone. I appreciate it, man. You're welcome. <laughs> That's great to have you back on here. I know we, we said last time we spoke or actually even did a podcast about a year ago now and things have changed. I can see firstly, your office has changed. <laughs> Yeah, office changed a bit. Um, this is my home office. I've kind of settled more in here, but you're right. A lot has changed, and you know, a lot's improved. So that's exciting to talk about. Um, Definitely. So yeah, I'm yeah. excited to be here and share with everyone. You know what's gone on in the past. Um, I guess it's more like 18 months or so. That's yeah. probably what it's been. It, it probably has actually. I mean, like you're still the same person, but the last person I saw you you had a broken or you had an <laughs> operation on your leg, and I remember you're sitting there <laughs> telling me that you, you're sort of housebound or seat bound. So it's great to see you up and moving. Again. Yeah, yeah, that was actually that was an interesting period of time for me because uh, I was forced to sit around the house a lot, and I I dove into almost anything I could get my hands on. I mean. You know, I know a lot of people, time is an issue and when you're down for knee surgery, if you're not interested in watching, you know, movies or TV, you know, it's an exciting time because for me, I just, you know, devoured your course. I devoured a bunch of other courses and, uh, you know, it, it was, although it was frustrating at times because you're immobile, um, it really gave me kind of a boost into getting serious with outsourcing. So that was kind of a cool thing that happened. That's sweet. Well, before we jump into what you've been doing, because when I when you sent me an email and you said that you had fifty seven clients on your books and you're working with a partner locally, plus you've got also your real estate investing business as well. I definitely had to get you onto the call because you're talking <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about using outsourcing to leverage that. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about your backgrounds for people who don't know who you are. Um, they probably want to know. Where where your back grab, I'll say it again. I've got tongue twisted today. <laughs> where where your backgrounds oh, no come, <laughs> come from, and also to how you are, got to where you are right now. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, my background was kind of in um, it, it was kind of in two areas. The main two things were in real estate and um, with internet marketing for small businesses. So, you know, like I took my first college class on in web design. Um, in 1997 at a, at a technical school here in California called Cal Poly. Um, but I never really did anything with that. I was just a science major. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I always had an interest in real estate. Um, I read the, the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad in college and that really got my, my uh, fire burning for real estate investing. Nice. And um, basically, you know, you know I, didn't, I didn't know much about real estate at all. So I went got a job as a loan officer and then I got a job at a big subprime lender doing uh, foreclosure counseling for people who are like right on the brink of foreclosure. And I was just, the goal, whole goal was just to learn about real estate. So, um, you know, I got really burned out on that business because it was kind of at the peak of the, the whole mortgage boom here in the US. Hmm. And uh, right about the time everything started to turn, I was like, well, this is a great opportunity to learn how to invest. Um, but what I ended up doing was going, like like a small business had hired me to basically kind of like manage their e-commerce store and I ended up doing that for five years while I was learning about investing. I was just kind of reading books and looking at courses that I could afford um, and hoping to kind of like, you know, build a build some sort of career where I could earn like a, 
like a monthly paycheck that was dependable. Um, but I was always kind of like in the back of my head, I was like, you know, there's something about real estate investing. I think it's like there's a real opportunity there and the chance for passive income. So I kind of like was a serial, um, you know, my wife kind of calls me a sponge. Like I really like absorbing topics, um, reading books, taking courses, looking at video trainings. Um, so, you know, but it was always kind of those two things. And then, you know, after working internally for two small businesses, I really saw that there was like so many challenges for small business. And it was really hard for me to like create a successful plan for them because it was so like, you know, there's so many factors. I mean, they have operational challenges, they have cash flow challenges. Mm. They usually don't have a marketing budget. No, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it was really difficult. And, uh, you know, so I, you know, last year I was, I basically spent all of the last year building my real estate business and figuring out if I wanted to become a serious real estate investor. And um, I had some good success with it. It wasn't like knock it out of the park, you know, type stuff, but I flipped a couple deals. I wholesaled a couple properties, um, which, you know, if you're not familiar with real estate investing, that's just where you pick up a property. It's such a big discount that you can in turn sell it to another real estate investor who will fix it up and sell it for profit. Um, just like wholesaling anything else, like wholesaling goods. Yeah, um, so it's like just buying but, the, buying a piece of pro, buying a, a product and then at wholesale product. and then just making a retail margin on top except you're doing it with property which is a larger figure in sum. Yep, exactly. So, you know, that, that can be a lucrative business for people. There's some people that just wholesale and, you know, that's what I was sort of interested in at the beginning. But... Um, towards the end of the year, I, I met a group of guys who were kind of, you know, like a like a step above where I was. It was kind of where I wanted to be at, and I talked with them, and I I just kind of built a great relationship with them. We have a very similar vision for, you know, real estate investing, and and uh, we both have eth ethics, you know, like similar ethics. Yep. And uh, so, you know, I talked with them, and I basically we decided to sort of joint venture on on a deal by deal basis. And, um, you know, so I, I pretty much, you know, outsource all of my real estate stuff to them. Um, if you want to call it outsourcing, it's not really outsourcing. It's more like partnering, but yeah. you know, that's a strategic relationship that allowed me to kind of spend, like I was telling you earlier, um, I only spent about 10 hours per quarter on my real estate investing business. And, you know, I now focus on my search engine optimization business. Um, almost 100% of the time. So, you know, having that one strategic relationship has allowed me to kind of focus on this other um, business that's business, grown yeah. this year. Which, which is the interesting thing because before we, we did start this call, we'll, we were sort of also chatting about how you got into this SEO and managing of these clients because you mentioned that before you're also to uh, managing the marketing side of the real estate of these people. And somehow uh -huh. people were coming to you and say, hey, Rob, can you do that for us as well? So maybe share a little yeah. bit more about how you got into that and, and then how it led also to your SEO business. Sure. Yeah, that's actually a great question. Um, that, that's kind of an interesting story because, um, you know, it's, it's a really good asset, like, like a good thing to know how to market a business because every business needs it, you know. Um, and what happened was in the, like in, January 2010, I declared that I was a real estate investor. You know, I got my office space, a, a little office space, and you even got registered the shirt, and got the shirt and the and the chair for it too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I was. I mean, it was like, you know, I was just like, I'm, I'm just gonna do this and see what happens. You know, and I told everyone I knew, um, and you know, some people were kind of like, well, talk to me later when you know what you're doing or whatever, but. The very first thing I did was I built a website that looked really good and I kind of um, got some advice from my wife on how to brand it. She's in advertising and I, uh, I got a cheap logo designed. I threw up the website, did most of the work myself. Um, you know, I found that it was the competition in San Diego for real estate investor terms and Google were like not very competitive. So I had rapid success getting found in the search engines. Um, and then I also did active stuff where I was like, you know, actively networking face to face with people in town who are already in the business. And I just kind of, you know, would hand them my business card. And um, before long, before like six months had passed, people would, like, I would hand my card to them and they would say, 
oh, you're Rob from Red Trolley? I, I've seen your website before. And I'm like, really? That's, <laughs> that's awesome. And literally by, you know, the end of the summer, all kinds of people were asking me if, you know, they're asking to pay me to build their website, get them ranked, all that stuff. You know, I mean, um, it's such a, it's such a hard task for a lot of people to learn. So, you know, by the, by the end of 2010, um, you know, these, these gentlemen, this group that I was, I mentioned that I'm real estate investing with now on a consistent basis, they asked me sort of like, you know, if I could sort of help them with their internet marketing, sort of like, mm. um, more of like a consultant role, like they wanted to do it all, implement it all, but they just needed to sort of have instruction and direction on what to do and uh, how to do it. Yeah. So I said, yeah, that's great. You know, if we can do a couple of properties, you know, at a time and, you know, I think this year we're on like our fifth or sixth property. Um, and I just kind of helped them with their marketing and fund some of the deals. And, um, you know, that ended up being like a really good relationship. And then, you know, a step farther than that was like by the end of last year as well, I had about five or six people asking me on top of those other guys to, you know, to do the exact same thing. They were like, we need help marketing our website. We need video help. We need, we need to show up in Google. Nobody's finding us when you type in relevant terms. So that all kind of like fell in my lap because they saw that I was doing it for my own business. And, um, you know, I, th it appeared to be professional. Like they assumed that I was in the business for years because there's guys in San Diego have been doing this for 40 years and you can't find them anywhere online. And, you know, they either just don't care about it or, they don't know how to do it. So, yeah, this is you know, it was a, it's a, like the perceived value is so huge. You know, someone's like, oh my gosh, I'm typing this term and you're there like for that. And then I type in something else and you're there. And I type in something else and you're there. You know, they perceive you as the expert because you're in Google. It's, it's kind of amazing, really. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Like this is a market yeah, like, that's not very, it's right. not tapped into very not much tapped. because there's a lot of people who are, are also wanting to get into this market to get ranked on the search engines but at the same time they're not being found and not to come in with that kind of expertise and to show you show them what to do is really really what they need so you know you found that kind of little yeah. market there i mean i think i think for like most small businesses when they open the doors you know or maybe they've been the doors have been open for a while and they just don't know quite why their business isn't working it pretty much always boils down to marketing because mm -hmm. they're like, I'm not getting new deals. I'm not selling as much product as I need to. I'm not performing as much of my service as I need to. So this is like an asset that you can use in any business. It's, it's, it's insane how many people need help with this stuff. So, um, yeah, to kind of bring that full circle, all, all of those opportunities came my way and I just kind of decided to take them and not stop turning them away basically. And that's about the time that I met my business partner that I run our SEO business with. And um, he was doing pretty good. He was doing better than I was. He had, um, I can't remember if when I met him, he had 12 or 20 clients at the time, but it was one of those two. I don't know why I can't remember right now. But <laughs> that's okay. he was, he was doing, yeah, he was doing pretty good. You know, that's, that's good for one guy and he's doing it all himself and stuff, but we both were having the same challenge. It's like, we can't help. We can only help so many people in a day if we're doing all the work ourselves. And I think, you know, if you're a small business owner, you, you understand that because you've hit that sort of roadblock at some point in the road. And you're like, you know, what do I do next? You know? <laughs> so we decided to partner up and, you know, he was already outsourcing a handful of things. And I, once I saw what he was outsourcing, I was like, we can do a lot better, you know, get a lot more leverage. Yeah. He's like, well, how? And I was like, well, we need to get organized. You know, I mean, you're already outsourcing, but you're the only person that knows what's going on. So we got super organized. We put all of our clients in a con um, client management system online. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, any one of our remote workers can log in. Our clients can log in. We can log in from anywhere. So, you know, little things like that made us super flexible and like, all the information was at our fingertips at any given moment. Um, so, you know, then we added a CRM and that, you know, for the sales side of things where we're talking to small business owners and we're like, you know, 
prospecting them and it's usually a multi-step process like you know it's super rare where they just call us and go sign me up i'm ready to go so <laughs> yeah of course there's, a, there's an upselling process and also to build that relationship with them first because they've got to trust you before they start yeah. using yeah. your services yeah. and yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, and, and talking about your yeah. system, the CRM system, can I ask what kind of system you're using to manage your team and also your, your clients as well? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, I'm happy to share. I'm a big 37 Signals advocate. Um, yep. We use Highrise for our yep. CRM. Yeah, it's just simple, man. I, like, There's a lot more robust ones out there. And like, when people ask me that specific question, I always tell them like, if you have a tool that fits your needs better, go use it. Don't just use mine because, you know, I like it. I mean, there's tons of these things out there. Um, but I like it because it's so simple. It's like, you know, the simpler you make things to me, the easier it is for everybody around you. So that's just my thing. Um, so we use Basecamp for uh, client projects. So if somebody actually becomes a client of ours, we add them as a, as a project in Basecamp. Um, and consequently, some of our clients have us optimizing more than one site. So to keep that further optimized, uh, further organized, we, uh, you know, we'll add a different project for each cl um, client's website nice. that we're working on, just to nice. keep everything straight. Um, so that those are the two main ones. Um, you know, outside of that, we just use Skype. You know, which is nothing. I don't think that you're. No, your listeners will be wowed by, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, those three tools, you know, we, like, let me give you an example of how powerful, you know, we, like we just hired three new sales guys, right? Yep. And there's, yep. <clears throat> there's our CTO, our CEO, and I'm the chief marketing officer. So there's six of us total that are full time and we have 57 clients that pay us a monthly recurring fee to get their websites optimized and keep them optimized. And, um, Outside of that, you know, our CEO's wife does the book, like the accounting for us right now. Um, and we have one like sort of part-time account management um, type person who helps us run reports for our clients and invoice them and stuff like that. Yep. So, but we do all that just using those three tools. You know, I mean, I think uh, Basecamp has a, I think they all have a free plan to start with. Yes, they do. Um, yeah. We've grown past that. We have like a medium-sized account or something, but I think it's like 50 bucks a month and we're running a, I don't know how much income we've got on the gross level. I'd have to pull a report, but it's a lot, you know, and that's just six dudes and a <laughs> couple of tools and that's it. You know, we're getting it done. So, so basically, um, having a team of, of yourself, uh, your business partner and then the three other people who are also key, yeah. And also another person who's sort of like an account manager, six people in total, you're able to literally take a client from step one all the way to helping them optimize their site and get it ranked on, say, Google and to do their kind of marketing. Um, talking a little bit more in detail yeah. about this kind of stuff, what kind of services are you providing for your clients? You know what? That's funny you asked, Tyrone, because we only do one thing <laughs> and it's get our client sites ranked. Um, you know, we have a pretty awesome offer. We we were kind of struggling at the beginning because we were getting good results for our clients, but it was really hard to differentiate mm. ourselves between all the other SEO companies out there. And small small businesses get bombarded with, oh, you yeah. know, they get it all the time. Offers. Yeah, and so it's really hard for them, you know, especially if they're not educated on on these types of things. Um, so what we did was we took all the risk away from trying SEO. And we actually offer to put our clients' websites on the first page of Google, um, and they don't have to. They don't have. There's no startup fee. There's no. Um, there's no. They don't pay us up front. Um, we do the results first, and then they begin paying us. So we put their website on the first page of Google for all the terms that they want to rank for before we even charge them a dime. And uh, we have a. We have a pretty much catch-all clause in, in the agreement with them that just says if for any reason your website isn't showing up on the first page of Google for the terms that you have us working on, then you're off the hook from paying us. Um, and that has made all the difference in the world. We, we call it the Godfather method. It's just yeah. you make them an offer they can't refuse. 
you know. Oh yeah, I mean, so, like, no one's going to be worried about not paying anything because as long as you can prove to them that you can't do it, then they'll they'll definitely yeah. pay for you once you've got the result. But how long does something like that oh. take to to get there? Because your your risk to them, like for your own risks, it does take time, and for them, it's nothing. So they could just sit there for like six months and not get a result, right? Right. Yeah. So um, number one, we've gotten really good at it. So you know, we would we would never offer something like this if it wasn't beneficial for us. Mm. Um, right now, we're mm. getting sites ranked with within uh, four to eight weeks for local. And you got to keep this in mind, though. Like ninety five percent of our clients are local businesses, so yep. we're getting them ranked for terms yep. like San Diego dentist and San Diego personal injury attorney. Yep. Um, so yep. it's not like we're competing on these massive global markets for like you know, the word car insurance. It's no. like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of our target market. And, um, you know, that, but that's still a lot faster than most, you know, SEO companies. I mean, it, we talk to clients all the time and they're like, we've been paying a guy for 11 months. And we're not even, we're not on the first page for anything. And, you know, that takes us, we've got a systematized now so that we've got like, or systemized, whatever you want to call it. Yep. But literally, a client can, can sign an agreement with us that day. The next day, they're on our project management system, um, and our CTO is in there doing all the on-page optimization, all the keyword research, setting up the backlinking campaign. And literally, like by the end of that week, they can have a jump in Google. Um, it's usually not first page, obviously, but of course, yeah. you know they've gone from like, you know, not in the top 100 to maybe like the 30th or 40th results and they're just like, what are you doing? This is great. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is very interesting. It, it's it's good because one, it sounds like if I can clarify this, is you basically sign the client on. They don't have any cost that they have to pay up front as long as you've got that fixed agreement and they both, you both come to agreement on this kind of arrangement. And then as soon as they reach the first page for any of their keyword terms, that's when they uh, it's have, all of them all of them wow okay all that's a really them. big <laughs> risk that you're taking on um, all of them yeah. then they start to pay you yeah and you know really like our goal is to you know we don't just want to keep them somewhere on the first page our goal is to get them like you know in the top three and we'd love to get them at number one for their term eventually um but doing that the right way the white hat way it, it that takes time i mean it's We've, we're finding that we can consistently get people on the first page in the one to two month mark in most markets. Um, and we've, you know, that's for competitive markets even. But, you know, get them in the top three for like 20 or 30 terms, you know, um, that takes about six months. Yeah, definitely. Um, to yeah. see that consistently. So, because we're not going to like, you know, just try and get them up there and then, um, you know, do anything weird that makes makes their site come up on Google's radar. We're like building these high quality backlinks, like week in, week out, and it's super consistent, month over month over month. So they're they're usually really happy because their site's at least on the first page. They know that nobody really goes to the second page, so they know that they're at least in the game. Mm. You know, when we begin billing them. And then you know, we just explain to them on the front end. We're like, look, you know, this is a marathon, not a race. You know, so you got to be prepared to, um, you know, you're going to rank top five or top three for some terms, but where you're really going to start to see a rush of business is when you're ranking like top three across the board in six months, you know, mm -hmm. months six through 12, you're just going to be crushing it. So exactly. that, that's important to establish on the front end because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people out there who don't understand this stuff, they just kind of think it's magic. They're like, well, you can just put my site up there at will, you know? <laughs> No, it doesn't work so, that way. It doesn't work that way. So, can I ask yeah. you then, if if once you've got them onto say the first page of Google and then you go, okay, look, we've got all your terms ranked on the first page of Google, you come back to them say, it's time to pay up. What do you say to that and how do you manage a, a payment? Is it like you, you said it's a recurring payment so they pay you a monthly fee as well, you're saying. How does that all they work? Do. So, well, what we do is we basically, um, you know, we, we have a simple one-page agreement that they signed to get started. And it's kind of funny because I like I know exactly what you're thinking right now um, because we thought about it too when we are creating this package. We were like, this is kind of crazy. Like, I mean, nobody's going to pay, you know? 
And we tried it with a couple of clients and they were amped. They paid us on time. They were so excited. They're like, you guys are amazing. We're going to refer you to, you know, colleagues and friends. And you know what? It's kind of twofold, Tyrone, because, you know, at the beginning we do a lot of like establishing the correct mindset. Mm. Um, but what one thing that happens, and I can tell you this, it's like every time we, we talk, like when you're getting close to closing somebody on our package, there's kind of a light bulb that goes off and they figure out that at some point they're going to have to pay us because we show them like keyword reports from clients that recently started with us and our offer is in writing, you know, there's nothing funny, there's nothing like left up to chance. It clearly outlines, you know, basically how awesome the package is and how mm. risk free it is for them to try. Mm. So then they kind of for fast forward and they go, well, these guys are so good that I'm going to either have to start paying or if it doesn't work, then I'm just, I don't lose anything. Yeah, so exactly. it, like at that exact moment, and it happens at a different time for all of them, but that's when they're basically ready to sign the agreement. They, they understand that they're going to have to start paying soon, yeah. but they don't mind. They're like, I am happy to do that. If you guys can do what you say. Exactly. You know, it's, and, it's the results that so, prove to them. It's really proving to them that you can do it. And once you've proven to them that you've got the results and hopefully those clients are going to be paying clients, um, then they'll definitely, yeah. um, sounds like they will definitely pay yeah. you. But um, what I'm curious yeah, we, about is yeah. how did you come up with like the recurring payments to, to talk to them and discuss? Because that's obviously something that um, people are not sure about because you're going to be offering services on a long-term basis. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we you know we have some like that is one thing we we talk we try to target people who are in it for the long haul and you know that's part of our like what our what I have said to potential clients and what our salespeople say hmm. you know it's you know hmm. you got to think about this as a long term marketing solution SEO is a great long term marketing solution if you want to just do something for the next couple months and give it a try you know try pay per click or you know, spend some money on some uh, some Facebook ads or something. You know, there's lots of like short term solutions out there. Mm. But you mm. know, this like they can. I always tell small business owners, you only got to do like three marketing things and you know, do them well, and you can be really, really well off. Um, and I personally think that SEO is one of the best long term. Of you know, like if they are doing that, some good email marketing, and they have some good social media or like a text message campaign or something. Um, you know, that's all it takes, but number one, it's got to work, right? So that yep. if you're doing SEO, you yep. can't be paying for 12 months and not be on the first page because that's not doing anything. Exactly. Um, but yeah. number two, you know, if you can get, if you can get to the top of Google organically within a year, um, you know, versus like a pay-per-click campaign where you're paying a provider to manage your campaign and you're also paying Google for the traffic. The, the return on investment is like silly. Exactly. I mean, yeah, organic. Yeah. Organic is going to be long term. Yeah. Yeah. So we tell them that. We're like, you know, so, you know, this is a great long term marketing solution. If you're not ready to commit to something for like 12 months, which is what we have in our contract, we're like, we totally get it. But, you know, just so you know, our service works. And, you know, a lot of small business owners are paying thousands a month for like yellow page ads or newspaper ads. And they're not yielding a good return. They just don't know what else to do. So, you know, moving that money from there to here is sometimes a solution. Um, you know, we really what seals the deal is we show them results from like, you know, our like our testimonials really kind of yeah. seal the deal for them. Yeah. Because, you know, like I have a personal trainer friend who tried our service, and he's got a small gym with a. It's kind of like a high end personal training gym. It's mm. not like a 24 hours. It's just huge. It's just really kind of small and personalized. And, uh, you know, he's like, I just want to rank for my tiny little section of San Diego. It's called La Jolla. It's a really nice area. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So he, I mean, he's got a great facility and a great staff and he's, he's awesome. So I was like, you're going to, you're going to crush it with this watch. You know, and he's like, are you sure it's worth that? I'm like, yeah. So let's, let's try it. So we got him on the on the plan, and um, you know, within a month, he was kind of already at the top because there was almost no competition. <laughs> and uh, he got this contract. He got he got this couple that had been relocated um, because of a like a a corporate job the husband had or something. Mm. 
And they were going to be in San Diego for the next three years. And he was new in town and he had his personal assistant Google for La Jolla personal trainers. And my buddy's site comes up. So the guy comes down, meets Trevor, likes him, likes the facility. And he signed like a $48,000 contract for the year for personal training and nutrition services. Wow, he must be stoked for something like that and the return that you'd be yeah. getting from that. So, <laughs> Yeah, he, he freaked out. He was like, Rob, dude. And he's like, I asked him how he found us. And he said, my personal assistant Googled you and found you and looked at everything on the first page and they liked your site the best and you know, Dang, the rest all that history. stuff. So he was like, Let's do more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, so. you mentioned to me, Rob, just a moment ago that um, most of the small businesses spend thousands of dollars on like maybe a PPC campaign or maybe local newspaper advertising and that kind of stuff. I wanted to just find out yep. from you is like what kind of average price would you be charging for a campaign for small businesses to do work with you? Um, well, you know, that's a good question too. Um you know, our, keep in mind, like, since our agreement um, is that we don't have a setup, like, if you go to a SEO company yep. or a PPC company, there's usually a setup fee because um, I'm not sure if your your listeners are aware of this or not, so I'll just quickly explain. But um, most PPC managers and SEO providers, they do about twice the amount of work in the first month than they're going to do in any other month. Of course. Because there's a lot of keyword research and on-page optimization. And Tyrone, you're fam familiar with this from doing all this on your own sites. Yeah. But it's a lot of work at the beginning. It is. Um, so that's what the setup fee is there for, is to like compensate them for that. And then there's usually a monthly recurring fee to um, create backlinks on a consistent basis, which basically just feeds Google to make it happy and keep it happy and keep your site relevant exactly. in the eyes of Google. Yep. So, you know, we we don't charge anything the first month to two months because of the way our agreement's structured. So our prices are a little bit higher than most people's, but you know, that's because it's a pay for performance type program. Um, having said all that, we, um, you know, our, we used to take people at 300 a month, but we stopped doing that. Um, the lowest pack, like the smallest package we have is for, um, you know, like your your small little area for five hundred bucks a month, and they get five key terms. Yep. And they really choose any key terms they want as long as they're local to that city. And uh, we have other packages that go up from there. Um, for attorneys, we charge more. We charge in the thousand dollar to twelve hundred dollar range because they're like consistently competitive. Yep. So um, we charge them five terms for. Thousand to twelve hundred bucks. That's very, very and that's, reasonable. You know, monthly. Yeah, it's not it's not astronomical. You no. know, my business partner and I both shared that vision of helping small business owners because you can go hire an SEO company that's great that'll get the work done, but it's like thousands per month. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's and what it, I was going to say because I I looked around as well because I have a local company here too that does SEO work for clients, and they charge a lot more than that, and that's that's why I was thinking, wow. If you're able to charge at those rates, you definitely get a lot more people coming to you, especially when there's no risk to them. It won't it won't even yeah. cost them anything and you're providing results. People are definitely going to be keen to try out your service. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm thinking, hey, yeah. Rob, you tell me what I need to do. <laughs> totally. I, I mean, for a small business owner, it's a no-brainer. Um, yeah. We also, opt included in our package, we also optimize their Google Places page, which is how small businesses show oh, up yes. in the maps listings. Definitely. And... Uh, that's be proved to be priceless as well because they they need help with that and they don't know how to show up, um, you know, especially with like when we pull out our, like I always pull out my iPhone when I'm meeting with them yeah. and I, I just basically Google a term that's relevant to their business and I show them all the their competitors coming up and the mass listings and, you know, when you do it on a mobile phone, it, Google serves the, um, the places, places listings first. almost always first. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, that's huge and, you know, you show them a few statistics on that and, you know, you just say like, look at, you know, kids are always on their phones, even like millennials and Gen X and Yers, you know, it's that segment of the population is growing. So, um, you know, as far as value goes, we feel like we have a niche in the market because we feel like nobody provides that much value for that price point. Mm. So. You know, we've we've been growing. I mean, we're adding like two to three clients a week at this rate, that's and um, we've got fifty-seven. Wow, that's excellent. Yeah, we started. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, let's change it up a bit. So, I, know, I know that really the, the reason yeah. behind this podcast was to get you on to talk about outsourcing, but we're talking about right. SEO stuff. Yes. <laughs> so, no, that's cool. I, I, I personally was really keen and interested in finding out more about that because you know I'm in a very similar field as you. But um, in that sense, it's as we've talked about, you can't do all this yourself and we all know that you only got limited amount of time, limited amount of hours in a day to be able to complete the backlinking process and that's the reason why you've had to hire people to help you manage these and also outsource it to get backlinks built. So, let's talk about um, some of the things that you've outsourced. What are some of the tasks that you get done on a day-to-day -day basis with your team? Sure. Um, so, there's quite a few things and they're all kind of an, in varying degrees and um, the reason for that is because we found that if we outsourced, you know, too much and, you know, to be honest with you, like if we outsourced the smart stuff, <laughs> um, <laughs> the results kind of suffered to say the least. So, um, you know what we, so here's, let me give you a short list and I'll kind of explain a little bit more about each one if you want. Um, the backlinking process, definitely. That's the biggest and most obvious one. Um, you know, like I'm a fan of, of talking, like when it, we, we talk about outsourcing something, it like we have some criteria that it has to go through. And the biggest thing is that it has to be a simple, repeatable task. Yep. And if we can't, you know, make it simple and repeatable, then we don't outsource it because it just ends up kind of blowing up in our face. So what we do is we have sort of like a, like a, um, it's almost like a daisy chain of, of things that happen when our client signs up. And once it gets time to start uh, building the backlinks, there's, they pretty much have a, a, like a five step process they go through. And it's, it's you know, they, if, once they've done it one time, they can do it a hundred times. It's the exact same thing. It's yeah. just the keywords change mm -hmm. and the links change. So we have a document that we created that's pretty much dummy proof and they just read off the document, you know, they've got it like open next to their browser window or whatever and it's got all the information they need right there. Um, you know, we don't really leave anything up to chance if we, you know, if we can, if we can help it. So um, backlinking is huge. We don't outsource the on-page optimization because we feel like that's just a little bit too critical of a thing. Mm. Um, the keyword mm. research we do in-house. Um, some of the the places optimization stuff we outsource. Um, we're actually getting ready to outsource some of the videos that we create for some of these small business owners places page. Nice. Um, this is this is where know, I, could, I could say something about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually, I would love to have your help on it because right now we're just creating Animoto videos, which are you know they're easy to create and easy to outsource. Yeah. Um, but if you know Actually, of any let me, let, let, let me give you a quick tip about Animato. A lot of people have been using that. Uh, this is just sort of injection just as a tip for anyone also listening. Uh, YouTube doesn't like Animato unfortunately and that's why it's not ranking very well. Yeah, we, I was talking oh, this, really? yeah, with a few other people who yeah. have been doing it and they said it's been saturated. That's why YouTube hasn't been ranking them very well. It's best now to try and do either a slideshow or get them in front of a camera. And that's something that I'm going okay. to be sharing in the future report anyway. But I'm more than happy to share that with you anyway after this call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, you're going to improve our bottom line here, Tyrone. <laughs> Just that one tip of one. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Sorry, you keep going on about awesome. outsourcing video marketing. Yeah. So, you know, um, things like that where, we're, you know, the, the owner's like, I'm too busy. Just handle it for us. So, yep. it's, you know, it's not really a service that we offer, but they're like, just take some images from the inside of our business and talk about like one of the services that we provide like teeth whitening or Invisalign or, you know, the fact that we or basically just showing the inside of our office so they can check it out from home from, from their mobile phone before they come in. Yes. So, you know, those are fairly simple to create and you just storyboard it and just layer some pictures in and put some nice music and you're done. But it takes a while, you know? It takes a while, so, yep. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier the account management stuff. There's a lot of like, you know, once a client comes into our system, we get them set up in our project management system and we use Basecamp. And, you know, when we, when we go into Basecamp, there's a series of steps. Um, I call it the welcome wagon. You know, it's like mm. they get a personalized mm. message from me that says, welcome. Here's your on online uh, client portal. You can log in here anytime and 
check the status of your account. Um, we'll be sending you rankings reports, invoices here. Um, we'll be storing, you know, login documentation for your website here to go in and make tweaks. Um, so it's really nice, like the perceived value of what we do is a lot higher when we do that because the like the second the client signs up, they've got a copy of their agreement in their inbox. They've got an invitation to join Basecamp. They log in there. There's a welcome message. Um, all of their documents are stored in there, so it's in one place. They can log in 24/7 if they can't get a you know if it's like midnight and they just want to check up on things. They can do that. So all of those things, like we've got again, we've got like a like a, a word document, and it's just like. Step one, you know, create a project using this template. Step two, um, customize it with the new client's name. Step three, upload their agreement to the member to the uh, to the files area of their project. Mm. Um, step mm. four, um, send an email message out, letting them know that, like, reminding them that we need their Google Places login and their uh, their website login. So. You know, things like that. It's just the stuff we need to get our site ranked quickly. You've done that exceptionally and well, Rob. Definitely very well. You systemized it so well that people can just follow it anywhere. It could be you or it could be anyone that, that takes over this process. That's the big thing is I do that process a lot myself. Like if there, a new client comes in the system and they're really important and I, I want to get it done fast, I do it. Mm. But if it's client and it's not really urgent or they're waiting on a website redesign or something but they want to sign up anyway, you know, I can send a message, I can send a copy of the agreement to uh, our account management team and they'll get it done within the next 24 hours and it's as good as when, when I did it, you know. It's, so, I mean, here's here's an outsourcing tip. You know, I, it, it's, it's, so, it's so important. I, I mean, I know that you know this, Tyrone, and one of the things that I learned um, in your course was like, you know, when you, when you have a step-by-step -step system for something and you try to outsource something after you have that done, your success rate with outsourcing goes like through the roof because, mm -hmm. it, you know, bringing it down into chunks of information, um, it's just the human brain can consume it. It's so much easier, you know? So, and like I, I talked to a lot of people. I have a couple of clients who've tried to outsource uh, a couple of things like Craigslist postings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they haven't gotten good results. And it's because they're, they're not organized on their end to start off with. So yeah. how can the person that they're outsourcing the information to be expected to be any better than them? You know, That's exactly um, right. It's, <laughs> that's such a great tip that you've provided. And what I, I can add to that is... People love how to steps. Just in general, people prefer if there's a step by step guide, they can follow any instruction. Whereas if you just talk about in general, people sit there thinking about how to do it and then will never ever take action. Whereas if you've got a step by step guide, they just go, Okay, step one, tick this, step two is tick that <laughs> and they'll complete it. And that's yeah. that's what outsourcers love as well. Absolutely. I mean like, you know, I have a virtual assistant who does a lot of like personal random things for me. Um, and she's not full time or anything. She just kind of does like some weeks I use her a lot. Some, some weeks, you know, I don't use her at all, but I pretty much exclusively communicate through her via, um, Jing screencasts. You know, I just yeah. record the screencasts and show her the steps. And I don't even, at this point we've worked together for a while. So we kind of understand each other a little better. I don't even take the time to write it out. But um, I just send with the link and she does it and she does a great exactly. job. It's like, you know, I, not everything's that easy to do. But um, the idea behind that is, you know, if you break it down and go do this first, then do that, then do this. Mm. I mean, it's, it's a really powerful concept. It's the reason why like McDonald's and all these huge franchises are able to to be as big as they are, yes. like every, I think everybody can agree, McDonald's does not have the best hamburger. That's not why they're big, no. you know. It's about the but systems. you know they can drop. Yeah, systems based. I mean that's huge. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I got I get nerdy with that stuff. I'm excited about it. <laughs> that's good stuff. <laughs> so let me just ask you as well: Is are you outsourcing all the all your work over to the Philippines? Is that the main country you're focused on working with, or have you got other people in different locations around the world, or even locally? Um, you know, we have we have it's mixed. Um, there's we have some people in India as well. Good stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I've noticed that, and we have we actually have a handful of U.S. based virtual workers as well. Um, but you know, there's a lot of the like for the cost of labor. You know, India is great. Um, I think that Philippines is a great place to find. Um, you know, they, like my experience with India is that there is a bit of a language barrier unless the task is like a certain way. You know, like I think, you know, forgive me for generalizing, but I think, you know, with an Indian um, outfit, like if you go to like a big kind of outsourcing outfit in, in India, mm. you get these massive spreadsheets and their first inclination is to do everything like in a spreadsheet, right? Yeah. And that's great for certain things, but like, you know, for web design and stuff, I'm just like, I don't want a guy who's an expert in Excel, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> redesigning my website necessarily. So there is that kind of like cultural thing that that goes on with, um, you know, certain areas as far as like outsourcing. But um, we do have Philippine Filipino workers. Um, my personal VA is Filipino. Um, and I've, I've done a couple of gr um, like – web design outsourcing projects to people in the Philippines and logo design things for clients yep. and gotten awesome results. So, excellent. you know, the Philippines is probably my overall favorite, but you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, you know, if you're getting good results from somewhere, great. Like it's kind of like the tool, you know, the base camp tool. Like yep. to me, I'm like, I don't care where I get good results from, you know, I'm not really like a favorite of one over the other, but to answer your question, it's like we have people kind of in some different areas. Yep, that's good. I just wanted to, to see because it's it's good that you're able to get results from different areas. And I'm not saying one's better than the other. As long as at the end of the day, the key point here is to find the right people to outsource in the right places to achieve the results, not necessarily that. But I mean, we've had some language barriers as, as there's been a lot of discussion on this topic. I think we all know about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's important to know where and, and when to actually go to the right right places as well, which is really good. It is. So, you know, I, I think one thing that, that's a good tip for Filipino-based workers is, um, you know, on, on the whole, Filipinos speak great English, right? That's um, right. And, you know, for most of the, like, there are some that have a little bit more broken English, but, you know, we, we don't really have anything that, um, as far as a message goes, like, you know, I see people sometimes who are trying to outsource like their company message or their product offer to a Filipino outsourced worker who doesn't know the inside of your business and, you know, might not understand the jargon that's associated with your business. And so to me, that's why that fails, not because there's a language barrier. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like, you know, it, like the, the big picture stuff, I think you have to keep you have to like either quarterback it, like, like, you know, instruct yep, or just do it yourself. I mean, it's easy to come up with a, a good concept and then the implementation and the repetitiveness of it outsource that part. You know? Yeah. It's, it's so important to look at from that because the strategic side, no one can replace that. It's your brains, your really your strategy behind it. And I think that anyone who does want to try and outsource that, I mean, can do it. it. It just that depends on how big and how large your business is. I know large businesses, obviously, yeah. hire management consultants to do all that and that's where their brains are being paid for. But for uh, small businesses yeah. like us, we definitely need to have some kind of control on that, which is, a, which is yeah, very, very important. Well, Rob, we, we've pretty much gone almost on the hour mark, which has been great. <laughs> I mean, there's been, awesome. so, there's been so much that we've talked about, uh, SEO stuff, outsourcing stuff, and I'm very sure that all the listeners who've been on this call today have definitely picked up something. Even myself, I, I've picked up a lot of great concepts and ideas behind this and I hope people can take it away and apply. If people want to get in contact with you to perhaps use your services and also find out a little bit more about your stuff that you've been doing outsourcing, how can they get in contact with you? Sure. Um, you know, since I've started this this business, we've been really busy. And um, my personal website you can go to, which is just robbailey.com. And I spell my first name with two Bs. Um, it's horribly outdated. And um, I'm happy if you just send me an email. It's just rob with two Bs at robbailey.com. So it's R O B B B A I L E Y.com. Excellent. And then, um, yeah, and then like our our business is called e-business firm. So like if you are a small business and you want to uh, check out our, you know, our performance offer, 
you can just go to ebusinessfirm.com. And um, yeah, any of your listeners that want to get in touch with me personally, like they can just shoot me an email and I'm happy to help them out in any way I can. Or if they have any questions about stuff that we covered today. Yep. Excellent. We'll definitely do that. And if uh, for people who actually didn't pick up any of that, what I can do is I'll put down the links below this um, podcast and you can actually access it. And this is will be episode 22. So, if you just go to outsourcinglive.com forward slash episode 22, you'll be able to get all those links that Rob's mentioned and even access to his site and his email address as well. So, I'll definitely put that down in the show notes for them. So, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much again, Rob. It's been awesome to be able to have you on the call and I really, really appreciate your time today. It's time for the Outsourcing Live Quick Tip. What I found recently is a really amazing tool which is available for both the PC and the Mac and it allows you to be able to record just instantly by clicking record and then hitting a send button which sends it via email to anyone that you want. And this little device is called Vo a Quick Voice, which is like an automatic voice recorder. And it's designed to basically allow you to just record voice emails, become a voice recorder, voice reminders, audio stickies, and audio editors as well. And I thought this would be great because if you're looking to just send messages uh, instead of actually putting it via email by typing it in, all you have to do is talk into a microphone and then hit the send button and it'll automatically send to the person that you need to do. It allows you to record, oh, I don't know, hundreds of these kind of things and store them still and they're very, very small little video files. So just try it out. It's called Quick Voice, available for both the PC and the Mac and you can download it at OSRC dot in forward slash quick voice so i'll repeat that again it's osrc dot in forward slash quick voice and that allows you to get access directly that's just a quick little short link for you so you don't have to remember a very very long one there now if you like more resources like this one you can find them inside mass outsource mastermind along with video tutorials and step-by-step -step instructions showing exactly how i use them to get a 30-day no-risk trial membership to Mass Outsource Mastermind, simply visit freevideoset.com. Until next time, I wish you success in your quest for outsourcing.